there, this is Anna Leggett from Love Brain Reset and today I am absolutely delighted to have as my guest Lynn Becker, founder and CEO of Power of Patience. Thank you for joining me Lynn and it's great to have you. Oh, thank you, Anna. I'm so glad that our, our paths have crossed and I just, I, I loved hearing about your work and about the dashboard that you've created um, and I just can't wait to share it with other people. You've got an amazing backstory of your experiences of um, having two daughters with concussion TBI and that led you into doing your work with Power of Patients and with developing the symptom tracker. So there's a lot to discuss and um, if it's okay Lynn, um, perhaps you could just share a bit about that, about your journey, you know, to, to where you are today, if that's okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a really important piece. Um, so people know that I come from the same space that they are coming from. So in 2015, my youngest daughter, uh, she was hit by a boy, left temple. He threw a soccer ball at her so hard. It was not a game. It was intentional. And he hit her so hard that it was the equivalent of a 24-pound sledgehammer. And she immediately was knocked out. Uh, she couldn't see. Um, and then I'm just going to fast forward mm -hmm. four days after the event, she stroked on top of it. Oh, wow. And even though she was away at school and she was a, a sports girl, very, very, very athletic. And also in, you know, the high academic spot as well. Right. Um, she really couldn't do school. She couldn't barely walk. The EMR system went down. And so the reason I bring these little highlights out is because every possible thing that could have gone wrong to help her really, really went wrong in the system. And you know, our, our healthcare systems are slightly different, but there are some similarities that when a person is knocked unconscious, you get them to the hospital. And I had to argue with the school officials to get her to the hospital for a CAT scan. And, you know, so really it was from very, very in the, much in the beginning, we had an uphill battle. Now I had no idea how big of an uphill battle it was going to become. So it's important that people know never to stop asking questions and to quit. They have to keep persevering, you know, for their loved ones. My oldest daughter, Alex, she had a series of concussions uh, starting when she was a little girl, 13 years of age at tennis camp. And a tennis ball hit her dead center in the eye, very forceful, um, and knocked her out. And unfortunately, she was not brought to any kind of ER. This was, you know, 10, 11 years ago. So I don't mm -hmm. even think it was on the forefront of people's minds. It was very obvious that she had an eye injury, a severe eye injury. And she was told, oh, well, let's really watch this eye. Her eye, she almost all lost her eye. That's how hard she was hit. Uh, so she moved into volleyball and every time somebody's elbow hit her on the head or she fell and hit the floor with her head, she was reconcussed and her concussions became easier and easier to get. But she also had more and more symptoms. But again, at the time, unfortunately, and this was maybe five years ago, the protocols were not that impressive, even though her school was doing a much better job. So I came from a space and I, I am sad to always have to say, but to be very you know, truthful, I didn't know. I was really listening to what all the different doctors were telling me. You know, I, I often will say, listen, I drank the Kool-Aid with everybody else, which my career as I have shared with you, I come from the medical world. And so, you know, I feel awful. I'll sit there and say, shame on me for not being a much more fiery mother bear earlier on, um, but we didn't know. And so that's the unfortunate part. So yeah, my two daughters, two very distinctly different injuries, one immediate and one over time. Wow. So you've been there, you've walked the walk twice um, and seen yeah. all the ins and outs of, yeah, of recovery and trying to get help and, and, and watch. It must have been so hard as a mother to watch your daughters going through what they were going through. It was. And, and I have to, and my daughters, you know, we were always taught, you know, be strong. You don't go to the doctor unless you're broken or bleeding. And golly, I, if I could take those words back and repeat it, you know, again, I, I 
am saying this so that other parents know the importance and the signs and the signals of their children with head injuries. Do not take them lightly. Um, yeah. My oldest daughter, when she got to number six and her last two, she, she no longer could play sports, you know, but her last two, unfortunately, she was run over by a car oh and my gosh. yeah, in wow. a crosswalk. Right. And oh so, gosh. so it gets to the point where she became very, very suicidal and mm -hmm. she was going to jump in front of a bus and both instances with these cars, they missed her TBI, even though they had her reports and her charts. And so it, it isn't until you actually can see your child or your spouse or whomever that you really, as the person who knows them best, can really get the right care because she kept following all the orders of the doctors and they were doing all these scopes. She had not stopped vomiting Anna for four months, nearly four months. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And lost so much weight that she couldn't afford to lose to begin with. And they were just scoping her down with uh, the GI tubes. They were doing nasal exams. They were doing food allergy testing. I mean, it was everything except her head. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it's shocking to me still. And I, this was not too, too long ago. So I had to go down into the hospital and fight for her. Um, mm. So it's important that people really kind of take a step back and yes. follow their gut. It, Absolutely. I 100% I, I agree. Yep. Yep. So, so with this, you know, I started um, tracking the girls. And yep. I started to managing because I, I alluded to earlier, I, I come from the healthcare world. My yes. career was designing clinical trials and running them and manage them all over the world. And one of the aspects that I would always focus on was uh, modeling or predictive mm -hmm. techniques. And I couldn't understand first, why was there no research literature for us to have access to, to understand what was happening to our loved ones or even yourself, right? I couldn't understand why one doctor would say, it's just a concussion, just relax, let her sleep. And I, and I would say, but she sleeps almost 20 hours a day. Like how long does this go on for? And you are truly left with no answers. So I was really then even more shocked when I tried to find a clinical trial. Like I thought, okay, well, I'm going to get my daughter on a clinical trial. We've got to figure out what's going on with her because she was not getting better. And we're talking months and months and months. And I couldn't find a single clinical trial. She was 17 at the time, my youngest, when she was first hurt. And, and typically in clinical trials, there are bands of age groups that you typically study 18 to 60, 65, uh, child protection laws and all that. So I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm striking out. We're going from doctor to doctor to doctor, just like everybody else. I'm combing the literature. I'm not finding anything. I can't find a clinical trial and I'm basically being told, take a chill pill, just relax. And I'm thinking, how can this happen? How can this be? There's got to be something we can do. So fast forward, almost two years later, we finally get the actual diagnosis that she has a traumatic brain injury. It was not just a concussion and she mm -hmm. stroked. Um, mm -hmm. And we didn't know that she couldn't see out of her eye because her brain was figuring out how to adapt to this. So now we have all these diagnoses and we're like, oh my God, now what do we do? Right. Yeah. And, and they, they were concerned because she was so far past the original day of her injury. They were worried they weren't going to be able to recoup any of her skill sets that she had. Mm -hmm. And, and you and I have discussed before, you know, she ultimately became a different person, but parts of her did finally come back. Parts of her fun personality came back and things like that. And, and I think that's a big thing for people to know is that you, you are going to be somewhat different. I heard way too often, and I don't know if you did, but I heard way too often, she'll be okay. She'll be okay. And it really wasn't that. It's that you have to figure out how to get her okay. So yeah. I started tracking everything she was doing, right? With all of her rehab and what the doctors wanted her to do and duration. So I was bringing binders with me because what would happen, she would be passing out in her rehab 
or she would be vomiting in her rehab. And we're talking within seconds of starting. And everybody said, well, oh, here's the protocol the doctor ordered that we have to do. And I would try to say, listen, it's too much. You got to back off. So it wasn't until I could show a trend line, like this is what happened on this day. And then for four days, she stayed in bed. This is what happened on this day. And she stayed in bed for only two days. Right. And so what is the wall? Like, how far could you really push her? Because it felt like every time we went to rehab, she took 10 steps backwards. She was feeling like she was being reconcussed. This went on for a long time. And so finally they listened and then they they backed everything down. We only did one therapy at a time. And to be very honest with you, it was the slowest rehab I've ever seen she could only endure like five minutes once a week and she had to be in a dark room and she had to have very, very low stimulation. So I just kept making notes and notes and Mm -hmm. notes. And that's how I ultimately built out the dashboard. Um, Wow. And spoiler, as, as I shared with you, I lost my job when Natalie was first injured. And it took a couple of years to go back to work. And when I did go back to work, I worked for the Department of Defense for the US government and I managed the TBI portal for them. And I learned about techniques that the soldiers were using or they were, they were using with the soldiers that I could use on my own daughter. And, and it worked and it worked. And I'm thinking, why isn't my doctor telling us this? Yeah. Right. And, and I realized they don't know. Mm hmm. It's that knowledge gap. Yeah, I think I think that that experience, what you've shared is, is very common. I think, you know, for so many people recovering from a concussion or a TBI, particularly concussion, particularly the kind of milder, mild, it's not mild at all, as we know. Yeah. But what's considered a mild um, brain injury is, um, you know, unless you're very fortunate and the doctor picks it up straight away or knows what to do you're kind of, they don't really seem to know often and you're kind of left to figure it out. And like you said, you were searching, you know, you were trying to find papers and you were trying to find specialists and you were trying to find all this information out. And that's just such a common story. Right. And um, I think as well, because it's just that, so there's that sort of general lack of knowledge, although I'm happy to say that since I've kind of been in this world for the last five years, I can see there are improvements and it's great to see certain specialists who, who are doing amazing things in this field, but it still doesn't seem to be like really widespread. Right. And there's so much education that needs to be done. There's so, you know, there's just so much work, isn't there to to be done. But I think the fantastic thing is, I mean, Lynn, it's amazing what you did for your, both your daughters and that you fought for them and you said you felt like you weren't the best mama bear or whatever earlier, but I mean, <laughs> you sound absolutely incredible <laughs> and your daughters are so fortunate to have you and it sounds like you fought tooth and nail for them the whole um, way. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and what what you've done with the tracker now, so to help your daughters initially, but now actually you've put it together into this amazing dashboard yes. that any anybody can use. Who's, anybody. Who's yeah. going through this. And so it sounds to me as if the, ter- like it was a turning point for you or for your daughter, having this information, um, being able to see these patterns, being able to see what was going on and then being able to work with caregivers and people. So like in her case, to dial back on the rehab and slow down and just go at a pace that was fine for her because everybody's different. I mean, at the end of the day, every single concussion is different. We've heard that so many times, but it's true. Mm -hmm. But I guess, again, using this the symptom tracker it, it's very individual isn't it yes for each person yes. and therefore you, people can work towards an individual care plan right right and so it's all personalized to every yeah. single person because as you and I know one brain injury does not mirror another brain injury and take my daughter Alex for example my oldest daughter each of her head injuries did not respond the same way mm-hmm. there were so many different And I think that's part of the confusion is they're like, oh, well, maybe it's hormonal this time, right? They always like to blame it on hormonal for for women anyway, (laughs) but they're like, oh, now maybe it's food allergies because you're having all of these GI issues. Oh, you're too stressed with school. That's why you're feeling depressed. I mean, they, Mm -hmm. it really presented so differently. I do believe that, you know, this is one of the aspects that I want to really bring forward is I believe how the person was injured 
is going to tell us so much information just from that injury pathway. And I think the simple example is when a person fills out their injury, where were you hit? Like what side of your head, right, left, mm -hmm. back, your, your jaw? Like we didn't even think about collecting jaw, but because it's personalized, people started to put their jaw. Mm -hmm. Some people put their shoulders and their backs because I guess that whiplash feeling that went yeah. up. But then the, we have these high level categories, right, of accidents, collisions, falls, and people sometimes misclassify themselves. But when they discuss it in the narrative of the dialogue, we discover through our AI technology that, oh, they didn't have an accident. They actually had a fall. Then I think mm -hmm. I shared the example for you earlier um, was that one woman said I had an accident, but she wrote, I was on my horse. I had no helmet. The horse got spooked. He took off and I fell. And the computer stopped it and said, no, she didn't have an accident. She fell. But when mm -hmm. you then say, if does she profile to the person who just simply tripped and fell? Oh, God, no. Yeah. Right. Because she was on a horse mm -hmm. that was speeding six feet above the ground. And what kind of material or surface did she then hit? So yeah, there's a lot to what we can start to uncover. And excitingly, we've discovered 18 new symptoms that people have never started to record. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, there are just so many symptoms. I think we've discussed earlier and I said, I think I had about 40 and it sounds absurd. <sighs> you know, it, well, it sounds ridiculous, but at one, one yeah. point or another, yeah. I, I, I've got a list, a full page list. And I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's just crazy. But I think, you know, talking to you, it's, it's just really something that's just becoming so clear in my mind is that these injuries, they look simple or whatever's happened to the person on the outside I think this is part of the problem is that on the outside, people look kind of okay. I mean, even if they're maybe looking a bit under the weather, when a doctor or somebody first sees them, you know, they look, they just look normal, essentially. Mm -hmm. And yet they're so complex. There's, there's just incredible complexity. Mm -hmm. And they're... Um, and it and it that the impact is serious on the person's life. It just affects so many things. And so I think there just needs to be a shift around what people think of as a concussion oh it's not just a hit on the head it's not just a concussion these are really complex injuries that need a lot of different um you know they need the the the, the recovery needs to be approached from lots of different angles mm -hmm. and it can take a long time and and people need to understand that and then you know there needs to be patience for those people and it's going to take as long as it takes um and I, right. I i hope i hope that's shifting um but i think all this awareness you know any awareness brought to this whole field is is helpful and great and will move things along mm -hmm. and I think something like the work you're doing Lynn the way awareness that you're raising but also the tracker um you know it fits into that it, it's very much showing wow mm -hmm. you know this is yeah. complex these are all the different aspects but then you're you're providing a way forwards and a way you're providing useful information that can be then used to help the person Right. really really quite dramatically I would think because if you're not tracking you're kind of still in the fog and in the jungle of like oh what's going on but it starts right. to give you some clarity about what's happening yeah and I think you said it beautifully like it, it's an invisible injury right you do look beautiful you look the same but people don't understand inside your head there mm -hmm. is some massive injury going on there which impacts your entire body. Um, Alex, my oldest, she started having seizures, right? So you're talking about 40 symptoms. That's not uncommon on what we're seeing on the dashboard. Now people can get overwhelmed with trying to track 40 symptoms. So we baby step them through. So they start with three and then they can add more as they're getting more accustomed to it. But I think to your point, yes, it is getting better, but this is where when you go to the doctor, you might be having a really good day, right? Mm -hmm. And you rarely want to say, oh, I don't feel well. It, I don't know why we do this, but we do not tell the truth when we go mm -hmm. to the doctor and you got to just lay it on the line. And so this becomes so powerful because people now get to actually show their data and it isn't just at month three or at month six, it is their whole movie, right? Right. Like here, here, look at my trends. Yeah. 
help yeah. me understand it. Absolutely. Right. And that is the empowerment. So, you know, a lot of um, healthcare uh, plans are wanting to do what is called engagement. Well, you're not going to be any more engaged than with this little simple app that we created. And that's the beauty of it. It's just that simple. Like it doesn't need yeah. to be complicated either. Yeah. No, it is. It is absolutely beautiful. And and also just for a person who's concussed or with a TBI trying to use it, the fact it's so simple is so wonderful because you just need as simple as possible. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. So that's so that's lovely. And we'll 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 go and look at the this the tracker in a minute and you're yep. gonna walk us through the dashboard, which is fantastic. So thank you for that. But just yep. just very quickly on the back of this discussion, um I just when we hopped on the call, you told me you'd just been to your daughter's graduation, one of your daughter's yes. graduation. And so I, we've been talking about the progress they've made and it's just so, it's so wonderful to hear it, Lynn. So can you please share this with people? Because yeah. people need to hear this. People need to hear yeah. what's possible. <laughs> it is. Uh, thank you. I, I actually just got chills. Yes. Yeah. So um, Natalie, my youngest, uh, when she was injured, and this is something I really kind of want to kind of do a shout out to people in Australia, believe it or not. I didn't understand what it meant to have a rebirth. Um, Natalie's injury was on the same day of her birthday and she was a very extroverted girl and she couldn't have enough balloons for her birthday party, right? She just loved it. Well, with her injury, I would try to recreate that whole thing. So again, this was mom as the caregiver trying to learn and understand what was happening. And I couldn't, I couldn't put enough balloons there or cakes to make her feel better. And I never understood it. And then I read a passage from somebody in one of the social networks and they said how their day of their injury became their rebirth day. And they went on, like, it was very insightful. And I I paused for quite a while because I really reflected upon what they wrote and it touched me ever since then because I realized it isn't just her rebirth day. It, it is her like brand new rebirth day because it's also her birthday. It was just so, so surreal that Natalie's injury fell upon that day. So with that, she had to leave high school and uh, I had to homeschool her, which she went from an academic uh, ranking of 98 percentile to 37. She was technically mentally handicapped. And I, I would often have the deer in the headlight moments of what do I do? How do I teach her? How can I help her? And no joke, she couldn't do addition or subtraction, right? I mean, I think I've shared with you, she had to crawl again. She had to do every everything automatic in her body broke from this mm -hmm. one single hit by this boy. Um, and that was the anomaly. Like how could one hit cause all of this damage, right? It was the sweet spot of your head. So she was also, as I also said, very athletic and extroverted and she wanted to be a big broadcaster. So high school um, came and went and didn't have anything. And then a lot of start and stops with college. It was not easy. It was not a straight shot, but it was up and down, but that was the one thing she knew she could control. She could control learning. And so she was able to graduate from college, but COVID prevented any graduation, but she did so well. And she did become a different person, but different by way of numbers, like almost autism, like she's not autistic, but she became so obsessed and really into numbers that she has an accounting degree and she went on for a master's and did it in one year. And so we celebrated three graduations oh. in one. So it oh, was Lynn, I, that's really amazing. Yeah. yeah. Deal. So yeah. Congratulations to her. That, yeah. That's Really, so you become productive, hear. right? You yes. can yeah. become. There's a productive. way. There's a way forward. It's just finding it. It's tapping into what's working, what's what your right. strengths are, and like you say, with with all the help she's had along the way, and all the treatment, and you know, right. the help with the tracker and various, uh, you know, all your support and everything. Right. There's right. there's an you know there are all the all these things when they all come together they they make a can make a real difference for people. There yeah. is real hope. Is yeah. There? And um, we, we, oh, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of times we were told just relax, like take a chill pill. It's just a concussion. 
if that doctor isn't willing to work with you, and we have other stroke survivors on the dashboard as well too, because they're adapting it to their needs. Um, but if they're if the doctor or provider isn't willing to work with you, then that's the wrong person. I mean, I'm Definitely, sorry. Yeah, it's time to get an e-doctor at that point, isn't it? It's time Absolutely. to find somebody who, who does understand and who can help. It, it really, and that's part of empowerment as well, I think, is just, you know, mm-hmm. empowering yourself for your recovery. Like, you know, it's hard when it's it's hard if you're the person, the injured person, because you're not functioning as well as possible and you feel it's just hard to do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're not feeling great um, yeah but it's still important to it's still important to go with your gut feeling and if something isn't mm-hmm. working it's time to move on and get the best help that you can because you deserve the best help you can get yeah and yeah. um the same with caregivers as well you know just thinking right is this working is this not if it's not working it's time to move on and find find someone right. else um, right because and there I- is there is help out there there are great people out there so and I can't emphasize yeah. it enough. I mean, we see it on the dashboard all the time where people will say, I couldn't remember what was happening to me before, but now because we remove recall bias and, and that became a real issue for patients that they felt like their their truth, their what they were reporting was being discounted because the doctor just was disbelieving them for whatever reason. but the data you can't dispute and that's the empowerment you might not be able to find your words right then and there but you have your numbers the data is there in front of you yeah absolutely no that's Mm -hmm. that's really key isn't it definitely oh yes um yeah and Lynn I'm sorry we've got some noise on the line and I think is it is it a lawnmower or something in the background I'm not sure yes (laughs) at your end so just as say to people listening that that's what the noise is if you're wondering but never mind it doesn't Sorry. matter hey just, <laughs> I'm sure you have a lot of beautiful lawn at the end of it but um oh, never mind it doesn't matter at all um so anyway and so that's that's one daughter and then your other daughter also she's been able to go on and and mm-hmm. achieve amazing things too so yeah share a little bit about her too? yes Alex she's in law school so she's on year number three she uh so her last injury was two days before she graduated from college when she was run over in the crosswalk and she was going to start school actually uh, she opted to start in the summer so she knew law school was very difficult and she refused to take any time off and um i'm thinking dear god you're going to get out of the hospital get on a plane go to manhattan and now try to start law school in five days. That's just not going to happen. And so there was a slight delay, but she persevered and there was a clear challenge. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, she did not have broken bones or things like that. Thank God. Um, but it doesn't take much for a head injury to be woken back up, if you will. So, you know, she, rolled up onto the top of the car and hit onto the the ground nothing broke again which is like truly amazing Amazing, but yeah but her head injury Mm. all the stuff now flared up and then new stuff flared up and worsened as well so it was a long time and then she had covid to deal with so she was having to do a lot of um telehealth i was fortunate that i found a very impressive clinic in uh, new york city and i got her into that clinic Um, And I did say, listen, you've got to use the tracker. You've got to stay on top of this if I cannot be there with you. So she was very good about it. And she was also very surprised at how well it helped her identify her triggers because my oldest daughter is very much like her mom, me. She likes to say, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And, you know, she she learned how to ask for help. And it was a it was a big asset for her. So. She just finished her, she lost vision in her right eye, believe it or not. Um, and she just was released. She gave me the good news last week that she, she has accelerated so much with her vision therapy rehab that she is above average in all of the metrics again, and that she can actually see out of her right eye again. 
Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. So yeah. hard, lots and lots of hard work and oh, perseverance yeah. keeping going, but it's it's paid off. Yeah. And yeah. that's an interesting thing to find, right? A doctor that can really address the symptoms. And, um, and we do track vision problems on the dashboard, uh, but mm-hmm. finding the doctors that can actually really address those problems that you're, you're describing is going to be crucial, which we have those resources on the website to help people. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's wonderful to hear. So anyway, two really, you know, great, great um, outcomes there for, for your daughters, which, which is, is so lovely to hear. Thank you. Um, yeah. And so, so Lynn, um, I th- thank you so much for sharing all of that. It's really mm-hmm. insightful and, and thank you so much. Um, and I think that will really inspire people, those stories. Um, and also just to hear about, you know, what led you, you know, you're having your background as well, not just with your daughters, but your, your medical background as well. And, and your background in um, sort of data and things like that and how it all came came about so it's, it's fascinating and it's just amazing when things kind of converge at a point and then something amazing is created and so that is the tracker so um if if it's okay now if we could maybe move on to actually mm-hmm. taking a look at the symptom yes. tracker and if you could just um walk us through we're going to bring it up on the screen and yep. if you could just walk us through because I think it is it it's going to amaze with how simple it is to use yes and yes. um so I think when people can see that um, all right so you hopefully just... people will decide to go and take a look and and dive in and sign up so okay yeah. I'll hand it over to you now Lynn off, off off you go oh thank you and you can see the screen right Anna? yeah absolutely yeah okay yeah. so yeah so it's really simple um as Anna said and I won't go too too fast um but it takes about three minutes if you were doing this on your own and you simply go to our website, which is powerofpatients.com. And I'm sure you'll put it in the show notes and things and you click register and we're going to start as a new TBI user. So what is also important to know, um, I'm just going to move you down a little bit, Anna, a couple things is that we have a specific caregiver track. So what we discovered is that, and and now coming from observational researcher, caregivers have a completely different view of a patient's recovery. And doctors actually like to hear a caregiver's perspective, not answering for the patient, but observing and giving their recounting of what they see. It's very, very important. So we have a caregiver track and we actually allow caregivers to track for multiple people. So um, in my case, my two daughters. So we realize that it isn't just one person in one family has it. So that's a feature that I just kind of wanted to let you know that we have up and running. So this is Sally, the therapy dog. She's Sally. I love her. Yeah, she's <laughs> she, she will come to life soon with our version two, where she actually can be clicked on and talk to the users. Uh, mm-hmm. And this is a preview of what their dashboard would look like. And so you simply click start. And this is your status bar of how far along you are. And you can register as a couple different options. Like I told you, we have Parkinson's people starting to use it, stroke people. They adapt the injury portion because there's all so much overlap otherwise, but they just adapt how they were injured or how their their symptoms and disease came about. Um, And the distinction between TBI patient and had a TBI, we went back and forth on this because people have different definitions of what is acute and what is chronic. And we didn't want to necessarily pigeonhole somebody into that bucket. Um, But what we decided was if you're a TBI patient, you're an actual patient who's going to a doctor. If you're somebody who doesn't see somebody, but you still have the symptoms, then you're not a patient, you're just experiencing the symptoms. So we will click on the TBI patient and we have gender and um, I'm just going to put in my name. Oops, I didn't spell my name right, you guys. (laughs) And mobile number is optional. You don't have to do that, but we do want to have Sally become your text contact so that if you do put it in there, we can have you text Sally directly. Um, And then you put in your email. There we 
go. And it is kind of nice. You can do these drop downs. Your date of birth, we are HIPAA compliant, Anna. We are EU compliant. We are GDPR mm -hmm. compliant and child protection laws as well. At Team Luke is another website that mm -hmm. I'll just choose them for this example mm -hmm. here. And your password has to be eight characters long, mm -hmm. at least eight characters long. A lot of times um, the terms and condition, this is where we say it is um, HIPAA compliant, EU compliant, GDPR compliant, et cetera. And that the only way we are able to keep this free, and this is free, um, mm -hmm. is we use de-identified data, meaning it's non-anonymized. And we use that for potentially to show researchers what do the symptoms look like? This is how we design clinical trials. And so that they, that's the only way that we can, you know, get this to be paid for by industry. You do not have to do a clinical trial, but just we'll make that even clearer for people down the road with a pop-up with Sally. So, so if, if people want to want to do the clinical trial at a later date, that's not something in the moment, but if they want to, they can, but if they choose to opt out, they don't have to at all. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the data that they enter, that's uh, only you that's that's private that doesn't go to anybody else correct um, I think you did explain something about the email address or something yes or is yeah so the email address is um we have to have it verified which I'll show you yeah and that way we keep the bots out of the database so that's okay. the only thing and email addresses are considered as well as a first and last name they are considered HIPAA um, variables, HIPAA elements, yeah. but we have to have an email address to know that they are indeed valid, but we don't collect any medical records. This is sure. all so it's totally private. Symptoms. People mm -hmm. can rest assured yep. that, yeah, that this yeah, is, I've actually that turned, fine using this. Yeah. And I have turned down potential partnerships because I will not allow them to be patched into our dashboard. Sure. So it's I think, all, I think that's very reassuring to know for people. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. all patient choice, right? Mm -hmm. It's whatever they choose on this dashboard is what they will get. So yeah, yeah I'm very, very, very uh, serious about privacy. So um, Sally is asking about the most recent TBI. So if this was a stroke person, tell me about the most recent stroke. This is how they adapt it. It's very simple that you could do something like that. And let's say that my most recent TBI happened um, back on February 3rd. But if it was a different year, you would just mm -hmm. click on this and you would go, whoops, you would click on this and scroll up to whatever year it might be. And then you choose the month and then you choose the date. So that's how you can do your picker. And this is really important. This is that example I told you about the young woman on the horse. So yeah. the more details, more, mm -hmm. more, more, <laughs> more, <laughs> the more you tell us, the better the models work. And I'm gonna show you where this information will go next. So let's say I was that woman on the horse and I fell. Mm -hmm. I would wanna be able to say, I hit the left side, the right side, the back, everything. And okay, so as much detail as possible in there. Yep. Yep. I'm going to say I've had two so far. So when yeah. we sorry, Lynn. More, yeah. Okay. Uh, when we get more information, that's going to answer all these questions for you. So right now, what we're doing is we're actually mm -hmm. verifying what you tell us in that little narrative to this, and we're mm -hmm. about. Eight, oh, I see. That's clever, isn't it? Yeah. It's amazing. So it, so you don't have to do even anymore. You just say, yep, mm -hmm. all right, click. And then if not, change it. So in the meantime, we're about 87% accurate. So I like things to be above 90% before I release them. Um, so then you simply say, how were you hit? Like you were hit in the head from a collision or a fall mm -hmm. or was it sports? And I'll say sports in this case. But we also discussed um, the personalization aspect. Um, and in my sports, I got hit on the front of the head and mm -hmm. the left. And I'm going to type in here, jaw. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, that popped up. Every yep. place started it. See, yep. Every place you see other, you are allowed to personalize it completely to yourself. So now at the time of injury, what were your signs? Uh, did you lose consciousness? Uh, did you have memory loss, right? And I'll say that I was confused. And I'm going to click save and continue. 
And then we go into symptoms. So right here, right now, what symptoms are you experiencing? So you have signs at the time of your injury, and now what are you currently experiencing? And we break this out by cognitive layers, as you can see, sleep conditions, emotional. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say I have a, a terrible time with short-term memory loss, mm -hmm. and I seem to stutter now. Um, I have very poor sleep but I have excessive sleep. Like I cannot mm -hmm. stop sleeping. Right. Um, I have, um, a lot of sensitivity to noise. I seem to have ringing in my ears, definitely light sensitivity. Um, speech pathology conditions we found are very, very important. And this could be limited social engagement. Um, you can't seem to remember people's names. And this is different than what what we kind of say, wait, what was that person's name again? This is the genuine cannot remember a person's name. Um, you seem to have difficulty trying to make plans, right? These are all very important for a speech pathology person to help uh, recondition you. Vision issues are huge. 90% of the cases have vision impairment and I don't think people get it checked. So this is a huge aspect. And we actually have a, an assessment that the national organizations use that if somebody wants, we're happy to email it to them for them to do an actual intake at home. Um, dry eyes. Let's say that you've seemed to have some distorted side vision. And if you don't know what words move when you're reading, we have little examples like this. I had that. Oh, yes. That's very familiar. Did you? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then even double vision, what we discovered is that some people don't really oh, quite yeah. think what double vision is. So I'm going to say mm -hmm. I have that too. And headaches can be caused by, you know, close work. But what yeah. is really important is where is your headache? And this was key with my daughter because in the back of your head, the cerebellum, that's where those optic nerves will crisscross at the very back. Mm -hmm. So most people equate a headache to just the front of your head, but that's not the case. It could be behind your be eye. Anywhere, yeah. Mm -hmm. It could be all over, right? And it could be the back, right? So mm -hmm. you click on that. And then you say, save and continue. Now we chose a lot, right? Anna, like yeah, you said, you had it's 40. very, yeah. I mean, I was looking at those and thinking, oh, I had most of those at one point <laughs> or another, seriously. Right, right. But it's now, very it, comprehensive. It's great. Yeah. yeah. So, but what we did also learn is that if we let somebody track all of these at once in the beginning, they get really overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So we ask you to choose only three to start with, but you can add more, right? But we just want people to get into that habit because when we make small habits and they're achievable, they become permanent behavior changes. So I'm going to say, whoops, sorry about that. I'm going to say, I want to work on noise sensitivity. That, that really is a big one for me. And I want to work on the light and I yeah. work on the sleep and I click save and continue. Now, this is something um, that is becoming very big global issues are called, they started in the US, I believe, probably 20 years ago, called social determinants of health. And over the years, the National Institute of Health in the US, we have expanded, what does that mean? Well, last year, there was a, a call for action and we submitted the request to the National Institute of Neurological and diseases and stroke. And we did it through a survey of our users. And what a social determinant of health is, it's really outside of the doctor's office, what is impeding your health? It could be being in a car. It could be not having food. It could be that I have to go uh, to school and I cannot focus on the whiteboard, right? I mean, it is truly anything outside of the doctor's office. And what these really, really are, are triggers to the people's symptoms. So um, sometimes young ladies that are on their menstrual cycle have much more extreme symptoms and people don't know why. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes we have too much stress, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I am going to say a big trigger for me is if I have lack of sleep. So here mm -hmm. we go with being able to customize again. That is a huge trigger. Um, if I have to be on a metro, oh my God, that shaking, that subtle rattling, it, all of a sudden I now have another headache. Uh, mm -hmm. if, you know, we're on the phone, we're on the TV and we're on the computer. So these are all triggers that do exasperate conditions. 
here um, in the States, we do have a lot of hurricanes. And I think I shared with you, one of the things that I started to track was weather because when the hurricanes came or when it was too high of a temperature and humidity, my daughter swelled. Like you would want to take a pin and prick her to let mm -hmm. all the water out. And so there is research that I found when I was with the Department of Defense about intracranial pressure due to high barometric pressure storms. And I was like, oh my God. And we actually have a case report of a patient who stayed out of the hospital uh, because she tracked this and was able to show her doctor the hurricane was causing her problems. Wow. Yeah. So this is it. This is your last thing that you have to do. Uh, Sally will come and get you. We do it by email, but I said we do collect cell phones. So when we add that feature, then mm -hmm. she will do it through a cell phone text and you can just do it right there on your cell phone and text it. By default, it is Eastern Standard Time at 4 p.m. So you can check or uncheck uh, whatever you might want and mm -hmm. you can change it to a.m. or p.m. and kind of go from there and you click save and continue. And so while we talked it through, we send an email confirmation to go ahead and get it uh, verified. So you go to your inbox and you click on verify and then it brings you back to the dashboard. Um, I want to use my existing account because my existing account has a lot more data than this brand new one. And I think it will be a little bit more impressive if that's okay mm -hmm. with you. Sure. Yeah, definitely. So here we are with the dashboard, right? Mm -hmm. After we verified the email, it brings you right into the dashboard. And this takes, honestly, 30 seconds to do it, but we'll go a little bit slower. If you have a vision issue and you're having a lot of strain in your eyes, we were mindful about that and we have a dark mode for people. Yeah. So you can turn that on. Uh, we also have it so that we are going to be setting goals and we want this so that when you're talking to your provider, or even for yourself, that you actually make really achievable and attainable goals. And you, you simply click on the edit button and I already have two of my goals in there. And in this one, I want to say uh, improve memory. Now, I do know a little bit about goal setting and with goal setting, you click on home and you come back to your homepage here with goal setting, you want them to be small so that we can get them where they are achievable and successful yeah. and then they become permanent behaviors. So every day we ask people, how are you feeling today? And I feel pretty good today, right? Um, is there anything else that I would like to track for? Now, I, I did track earlier, so I am going to jump backwards. If I want to give you a little sneak peek on May 16th, I want to track for this day here. And these are the symptoms I'm tracking, brain fog and lack of focus. So this is just a slider scale, and you just slide right on up, and it's however you feel. So you go from I have zero no problems to the absolute worst. And I'm going to explain what these little boxes mean now. And you can just simply click on it too. So wherever you feel now I'm scoring a 44 today and this little box popped up. We don't tell you what you did the day before, because this is where the science starts to become important. I don't want you to say, Oh, I was 20 yesterday. I'm 20 today. No, I need to know how are you today? Forget what happened yesterday, because the change over time is what's really, really important for us to look at scientifically. So one of the things that we did notice, though, is it's important for us to understand why are you having trouble? Or conversely, if you do really well, why are you, what did you do to get better? And this is where our AI models will start to be able to help people make predictions. So if you find other people like you that are also experiencing these problems, we'll be able to say, hey, patient or user number ABC has the exact same kind of injury. How come ABC is better than you? How come ABC's numbers are lower than you? Let's look at what they did. Now, you never know who it is, but mm -hmm. it gives you ideas of what you could potentially do. So that's one of okay. the reasons why we don't want to have people know what they scored the day before. The change is important. And then when there is a significant change, you know, we ask for information, journal, use this to help you remember what was part of the trigger. Mm -hmm. And then you click save and you can skip stuff. If you're like not in the mood to do that one, it's all about you skip it. Mm -hmm. So Fine. I'm going to say, I, I'm not feeling too anxious today. 
I don't have any unexplained sadness or crying. So here's an example of that's great. Um, I'm just having a good day. You know, there's nothing mm-hmm. to really explain other than that right now. Uh, heart sensation. So these are my daughter's symptoms that I'm tracking. Um, and she doesn't really have a whole bunch and unexplained. She drops objects and things like that. But she had a very restful night and low stress because we know what that will do to people when they have brain injuries. And then we simply ask again, we're back at that trigger, social determinants of health. And we, we use those terms because we want people to become educated so that they can speak about this to their providers. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the social determinants of health, I'm not having too bad of a day. Uh, I don't really have any stress or dehydration, um, minimal computer time. I'm going to say that there's bright sun, but that's really, so this is what are you involved with today? What is mm-hmm. hitting you today? Just that simple. And if it's none, you can simply say none. And now if, let's say I, I tracked earlier in the day, I can always come back in. And if you see, I can add more information up here. So you can use it as a journal. You're able to really identify certain things that may have triggered you later in the day. If you want to add more symptoms, you simply say yes. And now Mm -hmm. these are all the symptoms you're not tracking for. And you would just go and choose what is it that I want to go and add. So I don't, I don't really want to add anymore. What I want Mm -hmm. to do is show you some of the tools that are now here. So over here is a little three day chart, a little quick Mm -hmm. view, and you export all of these as a PDF. And if you see, it has a little hover. So when I hover Mm -hmm. over it, I can see what was triggering me? What did I select? Why did this number go up high? You know, and so again, these are my test ones. So a lot of time it's gibberish. And then here we have a three day, excuse me, a five day view, but you can start to see my trends. So my unexplained sadness is peaking. Why is it mm-hmm. peaking? I'm feeling very, very overwhelmed. Ah, that's really interesting, isn't right? it? Right, right. And so I took a break. I didn't track on this day. Now, when you come up here, you can click on this. These are the triggers. This is the social determinants of health. And so if you look at this yesterday, excuse me, today, for example, I had a lot of wellness triggers. That's why my green is really high. So my trend is wellness stuff. Wellness stuff Mm -hmm. is triggering me. Why? I don't know why, but I can tell the doctor. And this is where that partnership can really kind of come into play. So let's uh, go to the 30 day view. Now, this is, remember I said, we only add one at a time because Mm -hmm. initially we gave everybody all of their data and they were like, oh my God, it's hurting my eyes. It's confusing. Yeah, exactly. So we keep the social determinants of health, which are the little triggers, the triangles. So you can see how many did I have today? How many did I have yesterday? Or how many did I have last week? And then you just simply click on each of the symptom that you're tracking and you add them one at a time into the system. And now you can really see your trend. And this is where it becomes very powerful. This is what you say, no, look at my pattern. Um, You can also do this as a bar chart. So if you prefer Mm -hmm. that, and that's easier on your eyes. And then you can export this. And this is where it's all about the users, the users. And tell me if you can still see the chart on this. Yes, I can. Yep. Wonderful. So this becomes your document. You can email to your doctor or your provider, or you can print it and bring it to them, whatever you want to do. You don't even have to do it. Mm -hmm. It's all about you, right? So this is where if you see your severity score, wow, that one started to go up. Oh my goodness. Like I'm a hundred on this one today. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, these are just test words, but this is where we have a lot of journals and people use this to where it actually is very, very detailed, which again, is very good because by applying the AI tools, this is where we can find the people in the same buckets of injuries. And that's what's missing in this space. We don't have enough data collected on just the injury alone, the details around the injury of people, so we can put them in the right categories. Like I told you, people misclassify themselves as an accident, but they really had a fall. Or Mm -hmm. people confuse assaults 
with accident too. And when they write about it, we find words that really say, no, you really belong in this category. So mm -hmm. that might be one explanation why brain injuries are so difficult to even say you need eight weeks off or eight months off because the categories of how we're being put into these buckets is very confusing. And this report goes on for 30 days. And so this is what you get to have and at your fingertips, Anna. Mm. If I'd had something like this where I could have put, you know, numerous symptoms in and then looked at that. So I just think I could have recovered quicker and to then be able to show that data to, um, yes, to a doctor or, or whoever I was seeing a neuropsychologist or somebody, you know, and then you yes. can look at it together and they, yes. they start to get insights and they can make the treatment more relevant to you. Yeah. So yeah, I, I see this is very powerful and yes. I think it's, yeah. It's and really it's helpful not for people. We've, we've had, so there's a couple other things to, to just show you at the very end here. We've had people from England say, oh, well, we're not in the same healthcare system. Well, this mm -hmm. isn't about your healthcare system. This is about your health. Like this is about you just simply tracking this. Um, we really, it has nothing to do with a healthcare system. So I just kind of wanted to make sure people understood this. It's all about them. And you're right. If we could accelerate and know what you really should be getting when, Oh mm -hmm. my God. I think that's why I was able to accelerate Alex's recovery, even though she was so, so bad. Yeah. Like I knew from having her track and I, I figured out, okay, it's time for you to now go see this kind of doctor because this number is really low. So yeah. let's go get another doctor in. And so um, we have different webinars that I have up on the screen now. So we do mm -hmm. monthly webinars and these are replays. And um, we had neurological music therapy, which is so different than regular old music therapy. Like it blew us away. And so these people, these therapists do actual hands-on work with us. We did vision tests. All of us mm -hmm. did vision tests with the doctor remotely. So we really have... Um, some very engaging webinars that we bring to everybody this way. Oh, this is brilliant. Can I just, yeah. can I just clarify Lynn, please? So, so these are on, so if you sign in and um, there's an area on the, on the, the media uh, page, Oh, on the media page. Okay. And so people can go there and they can watch these webinars yeah. by different experts. Oh, that's amazing. So that's a great resource too. Yep. Yep. And yep. this is how customizable it is. So if you have any problems, I always want to hear it. And I get them along with my team. So I monitor mm -hmm. them. But I had a woman over the weekend email me and she said, I love this. I love the report, but I, I journal in it. And there's personal things I don't want to share can I have an option to not have that shown? And until I hear this, I can't think of everything. That's why I'm like, you tell me what you want and we're going to build it. <clears throat> oh, that's me. amazing. <clears throat> and that's a so brilliant idea because maybe she just wants the numbers to go, right? Not the journaling. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So people can, can contact you with requests for changes and yeah, yeah. different things. Yeah. Yes, all of this is free on the dashboard. Well, thank you so much, Lynn, for sharing that. It's really simple. It's um, designed, <clears throat> you know, both for the patients and the caregivers. We will be adding doctors onto the dashboard, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, so that when a doctor is actually really working with their patient, then you can have this full collaboration all the way through. So there's, there really is no limit to what we can do. Um, and the more people we can get into these buckets, mm -hmm. the more we'll be able to accelerate people's care. Yeah. I mean, for no, it's amazing. Daughter, so it's, it's evolving all the time, isn't it? It, it really is. It is. Oh, thank you so much for your time. Um, it's been so valuable. This, it's just, yeah. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. and I can see your passion coming across. And I'm, I'm feeling really passionate listening <laughs> to you, actually. I'm, I'm so glad you contacted me. And I'm so glad we yeah. put this out there and share this with, with lots of people, hopefully. Absolutely. So if you're watching, just, just you know, and it's of interest, just sign up. You've seen how easy it is. And obviously, if, if you do get stuck anywhere along the line, then you can contact Lynn and her yeah. team and they will help you. Absolutely. Um, so, so thank you so much. And um, Lynn, 
we've well, I will put details of how if your website and everything mm -hmm. um but it's powerofpatience.com and mm -hmm. I think that's it really and you're on Instagram yeah. again at power yep. of patients yeah on Facebook yeah uh, we're on all over the place yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's in the uh, website all the links are up there as well it's yeah. all there all yeah. right okay wonderful so, Anna you great. were an absolute delightful hostess thank you Aww, so much thank you so much it's it's been great to talk to you Lynn and um have a wonderful rest of your day and um keep in touch yes and I, yes I, yeah and I wish you all the very best with this thank you okay take care bye-bye <laughs>